Alright, so, uh, hopefully this will be a quick uh, demo tutorial on how to rig the letter I. Uh, it doesn't look like much, but this one is uh, has some slight modification. And um, by the way, I have some uh, background music that I'm playing uh, just to like study music. So what I have here is the top part. It has a stretch where I can pull, and also I can rotate. This is the parent constraint. These other guys, they're um, you know just orient constraint. And this guy is a parent constraint as well, where I can pull. Right? Don't mind this. Can't help that. And I can also rotate. So those are the only things. Well, extra. Center of gravity, where it's also parented, parent constraint. Parent constraint, see? And the other thing I want to mention is sometimes, let's say if you do some extreme rotation, you notice how it's doing this stuff, this wobbly stuff. This is even with the delta mush. So in this case, use case scenario. Uh, what you do is you select your mesh, you go into your delta mush, right? The smoothing iterations in the PDF tutorial and the other um, video tutorial that I mentioned uh, to set this to 40 in the uh, floating panel. Uh, go ahead and do it, right? Your uh, del delta mush, remember 40, where, but it's flexible. So I can go into my inputs, because this data is still in here, set to 100. And it does help. It's not perfect, but it helps. Especially when you're just from far away. And uh, the max maximum I recommend is about maybe 125 because anything more than that it, it starts to uh, cause artifacts and it starts to break it like it'll never be perfect you know but there's an option so between 100 and 125 it'll smooth things out delta mush smoothing iterations get uh, bothered by it's gray colored. Gray looks like it's grayed out or locked out, but it's not locked out. These are locked out, not these. Yeah. All right, so other thing too is to have all your controllers go back to normal, right? You just grab all your controllers right, that I had rotated. You don't have to go in and manually set the thing to zero, right? Uh, you just select them all and just do that, type in zero, and they all come back to normal. Yeah. Oh, forgot to mention. Uh, also, you notice on the controllers that they're locked out. Is everything everything's locked out so that I don't accidentally select it and keyframe it but the visibility is on so I can turn it on or off zero and one is on and off so I had to pause the video for a bit 
and also I have my display layers I got my controllers I got my bones and uh, when everything's set up make sure to lock out your bones you never want to have your bones accidentally moved or keyframed then I have my mesh yeah so these are actually really important too also for when I uh, you know help to troubleshoot whatever is going on with your scene if I have to go in there I can just turn on and off and look at things individually and color code it as well but for sure you want to have your bones locked out and your mesh and yeah you could have it locked out too because it's annoying to grab it by accident yeah and uh, other keywords uh, key things is where um, the, the joints make sure you do not have any keyframes on your joints none of these should be in red if you see any of these in red uh, something bad happened so just double check everything so nothing should be keyframed for your, your final rig yeah. The only things that should have keyframe are your controllers. That's it. So, anyway, um, I'm gonna begin. So, uh, I opened up um, this file. All right. Let's uh, double check. No history. All right. You should never see the repo retopo one you should not see that that's your retopologizing re uh, thing that we did before so it shouldn't be there wipe out the history wipe out the transformations all cleared out make sure everything is zeroed out in place straight up and down in the front in the middle and the top view And then after that, I'm gonna place my joints. Make sure you're on the rigging, rigging shelf, joint tool. And I'm going in my front, and I'm gonna hold X as an X ray. Now snap it. In this case, um, I'm gonna place the joint down here, my root joint. I'm gonna set the radius to. Uh, one this is big I'm gonna name it I guess I root join okay and then from there I'm gonna just click this again the join tool and then I'm gonna hold X and snap it this I'm gonna name it Joint one. I could put an eye here if I want. If I'm lazy, I don't want to. I'm gonna just pull it down because remember what I said about the baby joint that is immediately after your uh, main root joint or your, one of your main joints that's gonna segue into another branch, right? This should always be very close here so this is where the main pivot will happen right anyway so that's that control D just yank it up and uh, this is an x-ray control D spacing 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 
nice and even. And that's about it. Then start from the top. Baby joint is gonna hold hands with the bigger sibling. P. Bigger sibling is gonna hold hands with uh, his older sibling. P. Older sibling is gonna hold hands with the bigger sister. Bigger sister is gonna hold hands with the bigger, bigger, bigger sister. And all the kids are now all holding hands. But now the oldest sibling needs to hold hands with the parent. Press P. There you go. There is our chain. I'm gonna do an incremental save. I named this file, uh, you know, letter I, joints connected. Kind of like uh, main chapters of a book, you know. So you always have something to fall back on. Okay, next. Uh, right now, first thing I want to do is uh, grab my mesh, grab my joint chain. So in some of the other tutorials, I placed the controllers and then I did the constraints, you know, and then I did the binding of the mesh. In this one, I'm just going to do uh, binding of the mesh first and then the controllers because uh, for the most part it's interchangeable you know but after a certain point um, like I mentioned in the other tutorials uh, if you have to say make corrections and if you have to undo the binding right so skin bind skin option box so I'm gonna do that right now make sure all these are checked join hierarchy geophysic voxel, weighted blend, uh, interactive distance, blah 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 blah, maximum four, resolution 1024. So I had to pause the video and you notice now I have my uh, mind skin. skin. So it's skin. So well, let's say something needs to be corrected or whatever and then you have to undo this. You go to skin, unbind, and then you delete history. But let's assume you already have uh, your uh, constraints, right? Or whatnot. Uh, chances are you have to redo your constraints because the constraints may look it's okay, but from what I experienced, there's gonna be parts where it just doesn't work, and you'll be stuck for a couple of hours wondering, hey, everything else is fine. No? In that case, you have to redo your constraints. Yeah, just be mindful of that. There's like hidden little booby traps where you think everything is fine, but it's not. Best thing to do is uh, wipe out the constraints and wipe out the, the uh, skinning and go from there again. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is we, have, we got the skin. Now we're gonna go deform, delta mush option box, right? Hit apply. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the smoothing iterations afterwards, but uh, hit apply. Now we have uh, the delta mush. So we got all of that set. And now I'm gonna import file, import all animation controllers made a uh, adjustment to the animation all animation controllers now it has now it's including the global controller now it has everything everything whereas before I had the global control separate and I had these other controllers separate too now I just dumped it all together and make sure uh, these are checked on use namespace and this as well Naming conventions won't get, you know, put some garbage at the end with the naming conventions. It prevents that. So in this one here, I got my global, I got my center of gravity, 
and I have uh, two different uh, secondary controllers this one right and this one double-sided and uh, students ask me if it's okay to rotate them it's fine you know because uh, you're gonna have to um, you have to freeze transforms anyway you know they're just for visual purpose to help you select so with that in mind this one um, you know it's only one ended on this side I can't see it anymore so that's why this one I can just delete it And this one, it has a rotation, but it's fine for now. I'm gonna need to freeze transforms anyway. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna, oh, let's put this in a display layer. Okay, double click. I'm gonna type out underscore I, mesh underscore, give it a color. This controller double sided, and I'm gonna hold D as a victor, move and snap. Control D, hold D as a victor, move and snap. Control D, hold B as a victor, move and snap. Control D, hold B, D as a victor, move and snap. Control D as in David, hold D. All of it, all my uh, controllers that has the information, modify, freeze transformations. Good. My center of gravity, right, is there. My uh, mobile is there. I'll turn on my mesh. So I'm happy with the uh, how my handles are set up. But if if you want, you could just go ahead and rotate this like that. I mean maybe I like that because this is my uh, this has a parent con this joint is parent constrained so I can move stretch and rotate so this controller is a little bit special so uh, that's why I'm gonna just rotate like that and then modify freeze so there's there is a uh, you know leeway you know to have your own creativity if I want, I can go in, grab it, go into my attribute editor, and you can customize it. Object display. And within object display, uh... Alright, so I had to pause the video for a second. So, so I was talking about the being able to change the color so I can grab the controller and from here right shape means tail controller zero one shape and then go under uh, object display drawing overrides it's set to index but you want to set to RGB click on it and let's see if I choose like But you notice this side didn't change. That's because this uh, controller that I created for you guys is made out of uh, two NURBS curves. And this one is still kind of independent. So you go into here, because first we had initially selected 0, 01 shape. This one is 0, 05 shape. And you can see it here. Click on it. Click on that. Now there you have it. I'll grab that uh, instead of pink because this one is also pink and uh, like teal or maybe some dark blue that one is blue too maybe um, uh, orange yeah I like orange for this one but I'm gonna click here now orange 
I'm gonna change this one to orange too because uh, these controllers are a little bit special right look on that one they're um, allowing it to stretch so you know some flexibility there anyway uh, going back here make sure it's uh, frozen out right make sure all the controllers are frozen out all right good all right dang it's already 20 minutes uh, so I'm gonna leave it like this and uh, I'm gonna name it uh, this one is um, you know uh, important stage where it's just be it's uh, just before the constraints so uh, connected and uh, and uh, controllers see that way you can always fall back so in the next video I'm gonna go over um, the constraints and also even doing the parenting the controllers because they need to be parented yeah okay bye